Uh, my name is James Johnson. I'm a policy associate with the Asian American Advocacy Fund, and I'm here to just kind of touch on the larger atmosphere of anti-Asian and anti-immigrant sentiment that these bills are very much a part of. So as someone who's been attending uh, the hearings for some of these, or for these two bills, what we've seen is that a lot of the rhetoric used by folks that support the bills is very rooted in this idea of national security and also is very rooted in a lot of anti-China sentiment. Um, so it's clear how that kind of rhetoric can lead to lots of discrimination and harassment against folks in our communities, right? But it's not just the rhetoric that's being pushed uh, for these bills that would result in this increase in discrimination, but it's also the bills themselves. When we look at how these bills would really encourage folks who are selling property to really racially profile folks who uh, are interested in buying land, that would clearly result in just increased uh, harassment of our communities and then also folks from our communities getting that age old question of where are you from, where are you really from, a question that I'm sure a lot of us in this room are, are very tired of answering at this point. So it's, it's clear to us uh, at AAAF and our partner organizations that these bills are very dangerous and have very concerning implications for uh, increasing the discrimination that our communities face. But we know that this discrimination is also nothing new to our communities, right? We can look back very recently to the COVID pandemic where we saw lots of increased violence and increased discrimination that our communities faced as a result of very prevalent anti-China rhetoric, again. We saw hate incidents against API individuals nationwide spiked during this time period. And we also saw violence in our own community locally as well with the very tragic 2021 spa shooting. So we see a very strong connection with that same discriminatory rhetoric that was used uh, or that's being used to push these bills and the same discriminatory rhetoric that resulted in those very tragic incidents during the COVID pandemic. But this connection also goes back farther than just recently, than just the COVID pandemic. We can think back to the time period after 9-11, where national security was also a principle that was very much stressed. And in that national security atmosphere, that led a lot of community members to face lots of violence and lots of discrimination when these individuals had no connections to foreign governments themselves. We can think back even further to 1982, when two white auto workers murdered Vincent Chin because they racially profiled and falsely thought that he was Japanese. And these folks blamed the, blamed the country of Japan for the collapse of Detroit's auto manufacturing industry. And we can look even all the way back to the early 1900s, where similar laws such as the ones that we see today were passed in California targeting Japanese farmers to bar them from property ownership. And those laws were later struck down as unconstitutional. So that's all to say that the two bills that we see currently trying to be passed today are very much tied in with this larger sentiment and this larger issue of anti-Asian and anti-immigrant discrimination and violence in this country. But, you know, hopefully this isn't all depressing. Uh, we know that when our communities face unprecedented discrimination, we always uh, see unprecedented resistance in response. So later, Victoria will be talking about how everyone here can get involved in the fight against these bills. But for now, I'm gonna pass the microphone to uh, Tim from ARIA to talk a little bit more about the fair housing aspects of the bills and why they're unconstitutional. So. 